This is ludicrous. Swimming pool installed at Seattle Encampment angers neighbors. You think? Let's get into it. Let's see what the swimming pool and South Seattle homeless encampment looks like. This, this is what we're doing. Here we go. This is so ridiculous that we have to cover it. We have to talk about it. Man, what a, a swimming pool. A swimming pool. A sprawling homeless encampment alongside a Seattle freeway has a new addition this summer. Now, this is not in downtown. This is also, this is not in any of our usual suspect uh, locations, but it is. It's off of Highway 509 and Myers Way. It's kind of known as the Myers Way um, encampment. And it is location wise, it is, let me get this going so I can show you. All right. It is located. Here it is right here. Um, and it's in, <laughs> yep. It is in the location of South Park. It's, it's to the south of, uh, south and uh, just a little bit east of, of downtown Seattle. All right. So you got South Park down here. If we, uh, so you got South Park here. Here's West Seattle. I'll go one more out. There's downtown Seattle. There's your Space Needle. So we're right down here in South Park. So south, south, kind of industrial area, some tougher neighborhoods, less expensive, but they got a swimming pool. A sprawling homeless encampment alongside a Seattle freeway has a new addition this summer. Someone installed a swimming pool at the campment. It's been growing for months between 509, State Route 509, and Myers Way in the Highland Park neighborhood. Anything that is basically on state land, Department of Transportation land, man, it gets caught up in an encampment and they can't seem to work their way out of how to figure out how to clear that encampment. It takes forever. It's not like the city is able to just step in. The, 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 the state is just so inadequately equipped to clear and deal with homeless folks in general. They're just not set up to do that, nor do they want to do that. So there's, there's all this, you know, I got a dang deal with King County Regional Homeless Authority and all this ridiculousness. And so nothing ever gets done. Let's watch the video. Let's, let's just take a quick peek. There's one quote in here that Jeremy Harris, this is a story by Jeremy Harris of uh, Como. There's one quote in here that it's, it's pretty funny. I mean, this is a, this is just a solid story. Here we go. presents an immediate threat to the safety of those seniors who live just across the street. They tell me they've heard gunfire almost nightly and including this morning. They say they feel like the city and the state have abandoned them. It's perfect weather for a dip in the new pool at this homeless encampment in Seattle, or maybe a poolside puff of fentanyl. But someone told me that they've hooked up a, a poolside puff of fentanyl. Anyway, what else? What else? What better summer fun in Seattle than just a just a little just a little tiny hit of fentanyl? Swim around in our pool. We've got toys in the pool. I mean, this is great. This is summer fun for all. And fill the swimming pool with it. But for seniors who live across the okay, I'm not going to cut. I'm not going to do this so many times. But this okay. So this is probably out of an apartment nearby, right? Probably a deck. What? What do we have going on here? Here's the pool. It looks like we've got some we've got some piping or that's our water inlet. Do they have a filtration system? I don't know. I mean, they've got it's filled with water. Um it looks like we've got a fully operational above ground pool. And we've got some privacy going on here. We've got some, you know, fencing going up. We've got some privacy panels, I believe. All right. We've got four by four posts going up. And then we got a bunch of other framing over here. We got an RV here, car here, bunch of crap over here. But this is all, this is all new lumber. This didn't come out of the dumpster, folks, like we're being told in so many other uh, deals. And then we just got a bunch of stuff here. What? What are we doing? How, how does this how does this in any way, shape, or form make any sense whatsoever? It does not. And that's why this story is getting national attention. It's getting picked up by Fox. I saw it in the New York Post. Just a bunch of media outlets. Because it's so ridiculous. Here we go. 
the street. I thought, oh my God, what next? And they ain't paying nothing and stuff like that. But we've got pay to live here. This pool is just the latest slap in the face. They got tools. Are, they got toys. And totally trashed the place. Herb Eggy says since this encampment started a few months ago, his car's been busted into and someone just drilled into his gas tank. As elderly people especially should not have to worry about our possessions or our lives. It's not safe. Please get him out of here. Cheryl's apartment overlooks the encampment. She says she hears gunfire almost nightly. There's times where you've had to get on the floor because of the gunshots. Yep, in the middle of the night. She's truly scared. Diane Radishat has led the charge to get the state to step in and stop the encampment, which sits alongside Highway 509. We want the solutions. We know the problems, and we know what the solutions are. The state says they need to do housing outreach for the people here first, but that's been in the works for months, and after a homicide... Let's go back for one second. <laughs> We've got a Red Bull cooler. Oh, this is this is so epic. I mean, we've got a full-on couch here. All right, we've got a we've got a fifty-five gallon drum. We've got trailers. We've got we've got everything that you need for. We've got pots. We've got pots with plants. We got we've got plantings. There is nothing this homeless encampment doesn't have, including a swimming pool. I mean, you might say that, you know, you got a little freeway noise, but just think that it's a babbling brook in the background as you do some laps in your, your little pool, little tiny pool. Housing outreach for the people here first, but that's been in the works for months. And after a homicide, drugs, gunfire, and theft, Diane says waiting any longer means putting the people here at risk. Did you think the murder would change things here? Well, I think everybody thought the murder was going to change things. Oh, my God, there was a homicide on that property. They're really going to come and give us some attention now. And they didn't. Now, the seniors got a letter today from the mayor's office that said the city and the state need to study the uh, impact on the environment that a cleanup at that site would have. And you have to ask, what's the environmental impact of leaving this encampment there? Seniors are frustrated. Washtot was out at the site today. They say plans are in the work. There could be more specifics sometime in the next few weeks. Reporting. Thank you, Jeremy. That, <laughs> that, was, a, that was a great... <laughs> what do you even say to that? What do you even say? You got a swimming pool. That is how audacious the homeless have gotten. They're like, hey, we're just going to put a pool up. We don't really care what you say. We know it's going to be months and months and months. We had the same deal at uh, the Ship Canal Bridge encampment in Seattle in the Wallingford neighborhood. It was under, under I-5. And so the state, State Department of Transportation, they couldn't really work out. They were working with King County Regional Homeless Authority, getting this thing swept out. And they're like, ah, we need to check to see if we have enough available housing units to put these people. None of these people are going, especially this encampment, these people are not going into any kind of housing from here. This is a total outlaw camp. This drug outlaw camp with a swimming pool. Where the pool came from and how it was filled with water is not clear. But neighbors who've been raising safety concerns about the encampment say it is a slap in the face. It is. It totally is. Hey, we're living for free. We're going to, they, they, I bet you they tapped city water somehow. You've seen those taps on fire hydrants. Not that hard to put together. Do a little YouTube search. You're good to go. All of this is ludicrous, said Herb Eggy, who lives in senior apartments across from the encampment. These people come in and totally trash the place. He talked about that on the on the video. The encampment has grown from just a few RVs in the spring to now at least 15. Eggy said since the encampment started, his car has been broken into multiple times and someone just drilled into his gas tank. Yeah, so so you're a senior citizen, you've been living in the same location for for years and you know maybe decades and then all of a sudden, and it, it's not all of a sudden, but literally over the last few years I used to appraise in this neighborhood all the time. It's got some affordable housing. I mean, what used to be affordable housing in Seattle? 
And, you know, a lot of cookie cutter type older homes, you know, you've got some land that's ready for, you know, to be built, all that kind of stuff. And it's close enough to downtown Seattle where it's, it's a viable location, but you, know, you got some kind of rough neighborhoods. Let's be honest. I mean, when you've got an encampment across the street and you got gunfire every day, uh, you know, that's, um, uh, yeah, it doesn't scream, hey, buy this home and run an Airbnb out of it, does it? I never dreamed I would have to worry about things like this when I was 72. But times have changed. As elderly people, especially, we should not have to worry about our possessions or our lives, he said. Well, yeah, make that vote count, right? Because even though you're 72, I bet you, I bet you anything, you or your neighbors have voted for the nut jobs that have allowed this to happen in a city like Seattle. That's how we got here. We didn't get here by following the rules and, and, and basically coming down on anybody who broke the law. Nah, we got here by just allowing willy nilly anything to happen on oh, camp and it's good. Tits anywhere you want. Drugs, you betcha. Crime, it's okay. Shooting, it's all good, right? I mean, that didn't happen overnight, and it, you know, it's been ongoing for years. And this is what you're seeing is the end result of a lot of years of accumulation of voting the same way, going the same direction. This is what you get. Not that hard to figure out, right? Aggie and other seniors who live in the apartments near the encampment said they regularly hear gunfire coming from the encampment to the point that some seniors said that they keep their curtains closed out of fear of a bullet coming through the wall. Do you remember those? I've got a bunch of young people who always want to, they think it's funny that um, they're always finding um, like the senior alerts and, and they send me, I'm going to buy this for you, Sean, because you're, you're so old. And I'm like, okay, ha ha ha. Yeah. Just get, get me the deluxe one. I want all the features on it. I mean, if I go down, I want somebody to be there, you know, a couple of seconds later, help me. I've fallen and I can't get up. Well, when you've got gunfire coming through your apartment, that gives a new meaning to help me. I'm down on the ground and I can't get up. Doesn't it? Well, how come you're on the ground? Well, you know, I, I live down by the Myers Way in Campa, and they were shooting through the siding on my apartment. Yeah, here's here's that. Uh, what what are we even doing here? What literally are we building here? Are we building a? Maybe it's a sound wall to buffer from the freeway. Yeah, maybe. Do you think they're putting these four by four posts into concrete? Are you? Are they using quickrete? Are they? Are they? I'm not sure. When I hear the shooting, I stay down and away from the windows, said Cheryl Kelliam. There are times I've had to get on the floor in the middle of the night. It's not safe. Remember when everybody said, just leave the homeless people alone. They're not hurting anybody or anything. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you, you could still go with that if you wanted to, but it's not accurate. No, that's a total lie. In May, a man was killed in the encampment days after a Como News report on safety concerns from seniors who live across the street at the Arrowhead Garden Apartments. I can't, I can't believe how many dead bodies are found at these encampments. And you know what the city does? Uh, we've got bigger fish to fry. We, we got to go over and do something else here. And they, the encampment with the home built on it, uh, on Mercer Street, downtown Seattle. That that home, that building is still there. I saw it uh, probably a handful of days ago, or maybe it was last week, something like that. I was coming home from a concert. Was that a while ago? Can't really remember. You know, senior moments. It's still there. It's still there. And in the encampment, it's still there. We're just like, okay, yeah. And there was a dead body there is the point to that little story. They found a, a woman's body who had been wrapped up in a tarp for days and uh, it's okay. I mean, it's a homeless encampment, dead bodies, you know, pretty common. That's just any day that ends in a Y. We thought, oh, wow, there's been a homicide there. They're going to give us some attention now. They didn't, said Diane Radishat, who lives at Arrowhead Gardens. We want the solutions and we want what the problems are. When you've had the same problem repeatedly in different locations, you know what needs to be done. Yes, that's the problem. 
he, the city has allowed this stuff to get out of control and it's out of control. And you can't, you can't jam it back into that box. That's not going to go. You let it out. This is what you get. Now, welcome to Seattle for the all-star game. Oh, just don't go down to South Myers way. Oh, it's not good. They got shootings. They got dead bodies, but Hey, they also got a swimming pool with that babbling brook sound in the background that is State Route 509. Radishat got a letter from the Seattle Mayor's Office Wednesday that said the city, the state, uh, Washington State Department of Transportation, WashDOT, and the King County Regional Homeless Authority, which is completely useless. Um, maybe, maybe it's gotten better since that ridiculous Mark Jones is out of there. That guy, that guy was just like, what are you even doing? Uh, and the King County Regional Homeless Authority are coordinating a plan for the encampment. Okay. All right. We're, we're coordinating. We're thinking about it. We're reimagining public safety. And by that, we mean retired city, senior citizens not having to do the drop and roll because not because of a nuclear bomb, but because of gunfire outside of their apartment going into their apartment. Yeah. I had to get down. Had to just roll on the ground. Got to get away from that window. We recognize that this has been a long and often frustrating process for residents of Arrowhead Gardens, and we are pleased that we are moving closer to a site resolution. Moving closer, meaning we've got more talks. We're going to think about it. We're going to talk about it. The Unified Care Team is also discussing with WashDOT possible short-term activation strategies following site resolution to help prevent repopulation, the mayor's letter said states. That means they're figuring out how to block it off, right? And that's what they do. That's what they do. We've got a bunch of areas in Seattle that um, with the All-Star game, which, by the way, Seattle pulled off amazingly. I mean, Seattle really cleaned the turd to make that happen. And by turd, I mean, Seattle is a beautiful, beautiful city. I hang out on South Lake Union pretty often. It's amazing looking right at the skyline, looking at the Space Needle. It is, it, it's a super, super beautiful city. You got mountains on either side. I mean, it's amazing, but it's got some issues as we bring up here fairly often on the news for reasonable people, including gunfire, fentanyl, poolside, you know, all this kind of stuff. But, you know, for the all star game, we had amazing weather. And they basically cleaned out a lot of the homeless encampments nearby in downtown. Well, some of the pressure that we're seeing here, some of the, you know, this, this encampment growing, I believe is because, and I've often said the pressure, if you clear out downtown, the pressure is going to go north and the pressure is going to go south because west, you've got body of water. You got Puget Sound. East, you got I-5 and you just can't get that far away. And, and you got a big lake east of downtown called Lake Washington. And that's why I'm always saying I'm on the east side, which is the east side of Lake Washington, the west side, that's all Seattle. So, you know, this camp and this encampment has grown to the point where yeah, you got a murder in there. Ah, it's not that big of a deal. All of the pressure went to cleaning up downtown Seattle and surrounding areas to make it look good. And we did that and we had some great weather. And I think overall the all-star game, you know, for a lot of people coming into the area, they're like, what rain? So bottom line is it, it, you know, it sounds like we're, we're in the process of maybe having this homeless encampment swept out. But you know, you had a murder and nothing happened. You've had murders in other homeless encampments or just dead bodies, you know, kind of sitting in a tarp for days on end. Who knows? You got shootings. The problem is, is the state is not, they're not equipped to handle this. And the city basically just let it, you know, city, city of Seattle. This isn't really within their jurisdiction um, because of the whole freeway thing, the state route freeway. These situations just get out of control and they take forever, forever to resolve. I mean, the fact that this one's had a murder kind of tells you right there. So I think, you know, what you're seeing is the frustration from these citizens going, hey, we had, we had somebody get killed here. So you tell us, you know, we've been screaming bloody murder on this. And now they've got a swimming pool. Like Jeremy Harris said, take your poolside toke of fentanyl. I mean, what a Seattle thing to have happen, right? I mean, and, and let's be honest, we don't need swimming pools in the city of Seattle. We just don't. I mean, if you're hot, you're hot for all of a 
half a dozen days that maybe hit 90. We might hit, we might have more than that. Even when it hits 90 here, it doesn't really feel all that hot because we just don't have the humidity. Everybody always talks about, oh, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. We don't have humidity here either. It's not a high humidity environment. So you get this heat and you're like, oh, yeah, I have to go outside for a few minutes. Oh, it's really bad. God, I can't wait for that cool fall weather to come. You know, That's literally what you've got going on in Seattle. So to have a swimming pool is it is truly a real slap in the face. It basically just states we can do whatever the f we want. Yeah, you guys, you guys are on a whole nother level. You guys are tax paying citizens. We're gonna do our own thing. We're gonna sling the drugs. We're gonna we're gonna make it as comfortable for us as possible on state owned land to just do our thing. And we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get some water in here. I mean, it looked like clean, clear new water, right? I mean, how disgusting is that thing going to be in like a week? Just, I mean, it's crazy. I, there, there's, there's, po- there's toys in the pool. I mean, I, we need some good footage of this guaranteed. There will be footage of, if anybody goes actually swimming in this bad boy, there will be footage of that. There will be footage of that national footage. Like, ah, they're swimming in a pool in a homeless encampment in South Seattle. Seattle sucks. <laughs> and for the fact that Seattle hasn't been able to, you know, or washed out, hasn't been able to square this away, this is unacceptable. I mean, this is truly just wildly unacceptable. And yet, this is what's going on in so many parts of the city. We cleaned it up for the All Star game. Yeah, we, you know, we got it ready. It's like when I would show up to, people's homes on their front porch as an appraiser for years and years and years, decades of my life, I did that. And you'd show up on, and you'd be looking over. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm usually taller than whomever the person is I'm meeting on the front porch to do the appraisal on their home. So I'm able to see past their head and into their home, you know, real quick. And what the, the most famous thing people would say that always sticks in my mind is, oh man, I forgot you're coming. If, if, if I would have remembered you're coming, I would have cleaned this thing up and it's just this train wreck. And you're thinking to yourself, yeah, good luck with that. Even if you gave yourself a year before I came to clean this up, not happening. So don't even worry about it. And I'd always tell them, ah, you know, dirt, that's a personal possession. We don't count that either for or against you in the appraisal process. So ha 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 ha, let's move on. But you know, if I can't see a floor surface because you got so much crap on it, I'm probably going to put that in the report. Extensive personal belongings prohibited the appraiser from identifying the floor surface in XYZ room, period. And the lender will get that and go, ah, what's going on there? Yeah, you got you got somebody who's just, you know, not much of a housekeeper, right? Yeah, so this is what you got going on in Seattle. You've just got some, you know, kind of craziness happening and homeless people doing literally whatever they want, including installing a swimming pool for those half days, a half dozen days in Seattle where you need to cool off, smoke that fentanyl poolside, take a little dip. Oh, what could be better? Yeah, I don't know. That's it for me on this one (laughs) in the swimming pool. Appreciate you being here. Catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now.